The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up. To stand up and fight back. Welcome to Speak Up. I'm Senator Kevin Avard, your host. Today, we are going to be talking about a different topic other than the family courts and, uh, and issues that re relate to parental alienation. Today, we're going to be talking with a whistleblower that has to deal with federal grant money and education. And today, I asked uh, Lisa Brady to join me uh, on the show. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate I, it. I thank you for taking the courage and having the courage to come out and, and talk about something that might be very uncomfortable for some individuals. Uh, your background is, uh, is as an educator. It is, um, and I have a background in special ed. Mm -hmm. It actually was a um, second career for me. Uh, I started out um, doing physical, working in physical therapy, and I did that for about 10 years, working as a PT assistant. And then I began working with, um, in schools, doing physical therapy with students with severe needs. And I, um, I enjoyed that a lot, but I... Severe, like autism. Autism, mm -hmm. you know, like severe brain injuries. Right. And schools, you know, significantly separate schools, like the Monarch School of New England and Rochester. I worked there for a couple of years, and I, I really enjoyed my time there. But I also realized that I wanted to be more involved with the students' mm -hmm. programming. At that time, I was just doing physical therapy. And I wanted to, um, you know, become an educator. So I went back and got my master's degree in special ed, and um, and I did uh, one of I did an observation at the Summersworth School District um, in New Hampshire, and I enjoyed it so much in there that I happened to stumble upon a job because one opened up um, mm -hmm. just as as I was finishing my degree, and so I. Um, remained in that program for the past seven and a half years, and I have um, enjoyed my colleagues and um, enjoyed working there very much. And, and when I had talked with you earlier, you basically said that it was, it was those, the kids that were really, that were high maintenance, that, that, that that's the department that you were in. And you were helping exactly. these, these, these children to develop into areas where uh, just they can be, help them become productive on some level. Is that correct? Or independent? I've, I've always um, enjoyed a challenge. You know, I used to be a competitive distance mm -hmm. runner when I was younger, and, and um, my sister was too. We were athletic, and I've always liked a challenge. So when it came to you know, at, um, the education end of, of special ed, I was naturally more inclined to work with the kids that were um, much more severely impacted. Mm -hmm. Because um, oftentimes those are the kids that you know that challenge people the most, because you have to take out everything in your bag to um, to figure out what it is that's going to work for them. Right. And so that's the kind of challenge I like. And w did you enjoy any success with with what you're doing at any point? My program had an excellent reputation in district, and um, my principal and I at the uh, up until I was transferred from my school, had an excellent relationship. Mm -hmm. He always told me that I was the best of the best, and he was very satisfied with my performance, as was the vice principal. And, and my, my colleagues, they could see that I was passionate about what I was doing with the students. Mm -hmm. You, uh, 
uh, you were moved on later on because of you, you, you get emotionally involved with some of these children at some point because you're you're dedicating part of your life. It's hard to separate some of the emotion with with the fact that you're you're helping somebody develop. And if they move on, that's that's another issue. I mean, obviously, teachers get involved with their students to, to some emotional level. Mm -hmm. um, there's one particular student that that comes to mind that that we're, we're going to be mentioning. Uh, I don't know if we can mention their name or not, but uh, this student was severely uh, n needy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to properly say it. It was very autistic, and. And uh, it was part of a, a program. I, I just kind of want to get in a little bit into the meat of what's going on. Uh, a, a program that exhibited the, the great success of, of special ads. Can you tell me a little bit about what was uh, being promoted with this video? Well, um, the video, the the whole the video began in um, April of 2012, mm -hmm. and the student in question was had transitioned. Um, from the Idlehurst Elementary School. And the student you were intimately known, involved with at some point, with educating it? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Uh, it, the, the, the filming was, took place in, in 2012, and it began in February. Let me clarify. When I say intimate, just for the record, it, 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 meaning you were the teacher. Exactly, right? I know. Yeah. You, yeah. I, <laughs> I know, I just you know, nowadays, politically correct, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, I, I began working, the, the video began in February of 2012, the, um, the University of New Hampshire is highly involved with the Summersworth School District, as they are a number of districts in our area because of the, you know, the grant funding and that they, they receive. And, um, and so... Um, the federal grant fund. Federal grants. And um, in particular, they were uh, awarded a grant by the National Center and State Collaborative, which is p the U.S. Department of Education, mm -hmm. had grant money, and um, they awarded it to the in New Hampshire Institute on Disability. And the two gentlemen that were in charge of that were um, Michael McShean and um, Dan Habib. And um, they were going to put together a film that shows, um, that teaches the teacher, if you will, how to include students with severe disabilities into the classroom, into the mainstream classroom. Mm -hmm. That was the, um, you know, the, the impetus of the bill. And so um, when he transitioned to my school, the filming had already started, it had already began. And um, the message that I, received from Idlehurst at that time was that the um, student was uh, gifted and um, he was on grade level and he was college bound and that I only had to worry about behaviors. And so I thought, this is going to be easy. And, um, and so when, I, when I, the student transitioned into my program, meanwhile they're doing this, all this filming has been going on. And so sort of like at the tail end of the filming, he transitions into my program mm -hmm. in July of 2012. And immediately the middle school team, and it wasn't just me, it was everyone at the middle school, um, immediately started to question the judgment of what we were getting, the feedback we were getting from the Idlehurst Elementary School. and. Um, Particular, they, they trained staff. Michael McShean is a um, communication professor at the University of New Hampshire, and um, he um, he got a, he received his master's degree at Syracuse University, which is um, affiliated also with a gentleman, uh, Professor Bilkin, who who um, is part of the he, uh, Professor Bilkin is on the um, advisory board for the Who Cares About Kelsey mm -hmm. teaching video, which is part of what my student ended up being on. So I basically got a student who was, as they described him at the beginning of the film, was on a preschool level. Um, not necessarily college bound. Not at all college bound. He was preschool level when we got him. He was preschool level when he transitioned into our district he was preschool level when he transitioned into my program. But for the purpose of the filming that they used federal grant money on, 
For the purpose of the filming, he was college bound. Which was the furthest thing from the truth. Right. And, and what you described to me seemed to be uh, an exploitation for federal grant money of one child. And you had mentioned something about during the filming process there, that maybe there was some handwriting or... What they used was, the reason I had brought up the Syracuse University, the affiliation there with um, Professor Bilkin and Michael McSheehan, um, very few people in this country, very few, pe very few uh, experts would, um, would advise anyone to use what's called facilitated communication, mm -hmm. whereby they um, stabilize the person's hand while they're writing. Well, in my student's case, they put their hand directly on top of the, the, they trained the staff to put their hand directly on top of my student's hand and basically write the answers for him. And when I first observed this in, you know, when they came over and did a demonstration, when I first observed it, I said to them, I said, well, how does he know when to go to the next line? Because he wasn't even looking at the paper. And, and so um, they're basically writing the answers for him. And, um, and he was basically trained to allow them to touch and, and, and move to his write hand. for him. And um, not knowing or being cognizant of the answers or of the facts. He, he, he wasn't concerned. He was looking away and um, uninterested in what they were doing. And so you saw this, and it, it was incongruent with the title of the, of the show was. And so you brought this to whose attention at first? Um, I, naturally, I went to my, my director of special education, Pam McDonald. Mm -hmm. That would be her, her realm because, oh, first of all, I talked to the people within the middle school. Mm -hmm. And everybody basically on, on, on the team supported the opinion that this was bunk. Pseudoscience, they call it. Right. And so. Um, and in fact, the speech pathologist, Robin Scott, um, was saying she is not going to use that with the student because it went against what her speech, ASHA, which is the governing body for speech therapists in the country, uh, ASHA does not recommend that people use facilitated communication. And if they do use it, they recommend that um, you get a parent's permission to use it. And uh, because it's so, it's considered experimental and it's so highly controversial. Did they have the, the parents' permission to do this? No, they did not. They did not have oh. parent consent. And I brought that to the special education director's attention. Which is? Pam McDonald. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she, at that point, allowed us to use PECS with him, which is it's, it's picture exchange communication which is, you know, you, you exchange a picture for a tangible good. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but that didn't happen till the end of the, that happened at a meeting on, um, I filed a complaint against Pam McDonald because I had spent the entire summer with the student, absolutely frustrated with the support of everyone on my team, frustrated that she was ignoring my emails about my concerns about, about this, uh, what they were using with the student. Um, I sent along all the information about what all the professional bodies recommended, recommendations like the American Psychiatric Society, the American Psychological Association, um, the American Pediatric Society. I sent her a list of all the pertinent professional organizations. That supported what you were doing. What that you... don't support the use of that method. Right, but, but supported your argument. Supported that... my argument. Right. Now, she, obviously that fell on deaf ears. It fell on deaf ears. And did you go to the union after that? Or um, who did you go after that? I mean, when you, when you found that that was a roadblock. Well, I, I actually, I did go to the union at first and because uh, I filed a grievance against her on September 2nd. That's when you reduce, a, part of a whistleblower complaint is, did you complain? Right. Well, I complained on September 2nd, 2012. I wrote a long complaint about violations of IDEA, which is the Individuals with Disability Education Act. And that was with Jenny Mosca? I filed a complaint with Superintendent Mosca with regard to violations that I felt were going on with my students' programming. Mm -hmm. and, um, and 
Then um, what I. What was the response? I, I had union involvement. One of the one of the administrators who I had befriended, who I was very close with, um, talked me out of following through with the complaint. He, he encouraged me to remove the complaint because um, he asked me if I liked my job. I, and was it worth it to risk my job for right, filing this complaint? He said, if you file this complaint, you're risking your job, and then you're not going to be there for the other kids. You, you know, are you willing to do this, and you need to think about it? And at the same time, I was giving this information to the union, and they weren't, they weren't very much helpful at the time either with regard to that. Um, That's uh, SAU 56? Yes, it is. So I withdrew my complaint. However, it is on the record. And then um, the, the film officially ended on September 12, 2012. The same day, I wrote a letter to the district that is in evidence that states basically, um, you know, I defined integrity and, um, and said, or, you know, what are, what are basically, I said, stated, um, we're, what is our liability for falsely portraying? We need to think about our right. liability be, for falsely portraying a, one of our students in a video. Right. The same day as the video Without ended. Without parental consent. Without parental consent. Because I had talked to the student's mother, and, um, and she, she didn't buy into the video. She didn't buy into the facilitated communication or hand over hand assist, whatever you want to call it, because, and I say what, what, that. Was she paid money for the video? She wasn't paid money, but what's interesting is, is at the time I was told that he was getting, my student was getting an iPad for his participation by his former case manager. I was told that he was getting an iPad for his participation. And um, after, the, after I filed the complaint sometime about two months later, they came in and took his iPad back. And I, I said, that's, you gave that to him for participating. It's kind of like buying New York for a song, right? Right. And then, the, and then oh, never And mind. when I mentioned it to his mother, I said, did you know they took his iPad away? She, from, she goes, we, and I asked her if she knew they were, if she was under the impression that iPad was his. And she said it was his. They said that he was going to get an iPad. So oh, they, they even took that back. It's like the, the Grinch that went. Went back. No, I just think of Indian morsel. giving, you know, the federal government giving you something <laughs> and then taking it back. Um, I'm not a big fan. So, uh, so we talked about Dan Habib. Uh, in the unions, uh, they didn't do a whole lot for you. Um, the special ed director, Pam Mac, uh, McDonald. Uh, Michael Sh uh, Sheehan, we already mentioned. Michael McSheehan, McSheehan. he and Dan Habib. Uh, they have, an, you know, they have excellent. I, I was reading the, the other day that they... In May of 2014, two days before I filed a complaint with Virginia Barry, you know, it was a few months before, yeah. that they were up at the State House giving all the senators a copy of the Who Cares About Kelsey video. What year was this? Video in 2014. 14. Okay. I thought in May of 2014. I, I could I wasn't be wrong, in I wasn't but in they had been giving out the video to a, a, a bunch of the senators and on the edu education committee. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they gave them out to other senators, but a um, few months later, I filed a complaint with Virginia Barry about the fraudulent video. I, I, I officially filed the complaint with her, mm -hmm. and to this date, she has not uh, responded to that specific complaint that I filed, she has she she responded once to a complaint that it with um, and it was ir irrelevant information. Mm -hmm. I was complaining if you if you look on the new um, new U.S. Department of Education website for Office of Inspector General under grant fraud, it explains what in a nutshell what grant fraud is. And does this, according to your opinion? meet the definition. It does. By taking grant funding from the U.S. government and uh, false and reporting false results, that in itself constitutes grant fraud. Now, you've also brought this to Governor Hassan's attention as well. I have. I brought it to her attention. I have probably sent Virginia Barry and, um, and Governor Hassan nearly 100 emails 
complaining about the situation. Any reply? No reply at all. I am. Um, I did, when you came to my office, I did ask my, my secretary to, to set up an interview with her. I'm, I'm still waiting for, for a response from that. And I did share uh, your resume along with some of the documentation that you presented with me to one of the other senators. And uh, hopefully we can move this forward. I know that the, like the that. entire Senate saw your email with regard to uh, fraud. Uh, and uh, I, I, I just reached out. I don't know if any of the other senators reached out to you yet. I've had a number of emails. And, and sadly, it's, it's taken, you know, this is the point that I'm finally getting some feedback is it, it has to get all the way, my issue has to get all the way up to the Senate and the, and the House to, for me, the House of Representatives and then the Senate in order for me to get any kind of um, communication. One, one little fact that, you know, it's probably obvious to the viewers, but uh, I, I don't think we spelled it out. You actually did get fired. I got fired. I got fired. Uh, that's a that's in a long story. <laughs> We're not going to get into the long. We got about seven more minutes left okay. to the show for at, at, for this particular stage, but you did get fired. Um, did they give you a reason? I got fired because uh, first of all, um, I was I was transferred in March of 2014, mm -hmm. and um, you didn't do anything criminally wrong. I didn't do anything criminally wrong. They, I I had. Um, I had been having problems with my coworker, mm -hmm. and who had addiction problems, and um, I was complaining about safety to my principal Dana Hilliard. I remember you mentioning this. And um, and he wasn't responsive because he had just won his election for mayor. He's very popular in Summersworth, um, and he and I had never had we never had one issue before this, and. Um, he wasn't tending to my classroom at the time when I needed him. And this was definitely a safety issue with, with the other person working with special needs actually falling asleep on the job. Falling asleep, working with a nonverbal autistic girl. And I believe there was prescription medication or something. She, so that there she was had being admitted abused. to being, getting Oxycontin from two different physicians. And she was a safety risk. And, and, and it wasn't just me that was complaining. It was everyone on my team. Mm -hmm. But at the time... Superintendent Mosca was looking for anything, any good excuse she could to get rid of me because, or to punish me. Because this the, is an the, embarrassment. The film was about to be released mm -hmm. in March of 2014. So they knew. I never thought that this film would be released after, I, you know, I thought I got through to them like that, you can't do this. But they actually followed through and published this film for sale and which which puts it into a a federal um criminal statute of mail fraud because they they are using the u.s mail to sell a video that they knew was false have you reached out to any of the senators senator ayotte or, or shaheen i have i have reached out to um both senator ayotte and senator shaheen and um they have have both responded mm -hmm with you know with the call it takes a lot of courage to, to speak out against something when 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 you see a child being exploited because that's the only that's the the narrative that i'm hearing here and for for federal money i mean do you know how much money was for the i mean how much did unh get it did the state get it I mean, it was i don't know the total i don't have the total figures mm -hmm. it, it was it was also funded with um donation money from various organizations that probably can afford to probably need donations themselves, but um, it was also funded with um, a state grant money as well, New Hampshire state grant money. And so um, it, uh, the one issue that I, I, I wanted to, to bring up in terms of methodology, because this was on one of the reasons they, they um, used to terminate me, was they were claiming that my, my claims about grant fraud, they were sort of, um, saying that they, they weren't pertinent because it, this was an issue about methodology that I didn't approve of the methodology that they were using. This is not an issue about methodology. The methodology they used was, call it facilitated communication, call it writing for him. Um, that was basically the weapon used in a crime. The child was not 
college bound? No. And somebody was writing the answers. And they, they knew that because all of his entire educational file suggests that he's, that he's significantly cognitively impaired. There's not one thing in his educational record that would suggest that he's college bound. Would you mind coming on at a later time and, and you know, maybe getting into a little bit more detail? Maybe we can, uh, we have reached out to some people in the Senate and hopefully the governor will respond to our, our inquiry because we'd love to sit down and have you know, a frank discussion with the governor. Maybe there's just a misunderstanding. I but, would. Uh, we would, uh, would like to see you know, some progress on this. But uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show and uh, we'll, we'll try to uh, reach out to as many people as possible. Uh, it's becoming more and more apparent that parents are losing their rights, children are being exploited, and it's all about the big dollar. And teachers that speak up for them, I mean... Are punished. Everyone is afraid to support me at my school because they've been threatened, and they fear losing their own job. And then when I become an example for other teachers, if you speak up for a kid, you're never going to teach again because I'm on a blacklist right now. And uh, once you get on, a, once you get fired from as a teacher from in the in the state of New Hampshire, it shows up on your um, your file up at the Department of Ed, so that any superintendent, if I were to apply to a job, any superintendent after that would have access to the fact that I was fired from a job. And what motivation would anyone have to hire me? That's tyranny, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, we are, we remember Joe McCarthy, right? Right. Thank you for watching. Speak up. If you have a story and uh, you want to talk about it, feel like you're falling through the cracks and nobody's listening, we'll listen. We'll give you a fair shake. We don't ask you if you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent. We don't ask any of that. We ask you what your story is and if you can document it. Uh, we're going to be looking more into this, and we, uh, we will stay tuned. And until next week, thanks for watching Speak Up. Thank you for watching Speak Up. And we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark Cleaning. If you have a carpet job, call Aardvark. They're the best in town. And if you have a story and you want to be heard, contact me, Kevin Avard, at speakupnh at gmail.com. That's speakupnhgmail.com. We'll get your voice heard. Thanks for watching. Until next week. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up is directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.